in the last section of lecture on topographic analysis, we will talk about analysis of time series of terrain data. We can analyze terrain uh, time series in different ways. One approach is to extract certain topographic features and trace their change uh, over time. For example, we can extract shorelines and compute or measure displacement of shorelines and compute the uh, shoreline erosion. Or, in this case, we can extract dune crests and measure their horizontal migration. We can also compute elevation and volume change over time and extract certain features and uh, um, compute the area of this feature, uh, the change in the area of this feature. Another approach is to preserve the resolution and the spatial detail of the uh, time series and do parcel analysis. That means that we will compute a new value for each grid cell as a function of the values in the same grid cell in the entire time series. And the results can be simple, but then they can provide uh, quite useful information. For example, we can compute very simple statistics such as average or standard deviation over time, or we can find the minimum elevation or maximum elevation, or we can find the range of elevations for each grid cell. And in this way, the resulting map will be some measure of uh, spatial distribution of topographic change. So let's look at some examples. So for example, we can define and we can compute range map. That means the difference between the maximum and minimum elevation measured within the entire time series. This is how such a range map can look like. So here we have the difference between the minimum and maximum elevation measured over almost 10 years between 1999 and 2008 on the uh, coast of North Carolina in the area of city of, uh, of town of Nags Head. So here we have a piece of dune and here are some homes. So you can see that the largest range of change was in the area where we have some new buildings built and also on the dune. So the dune is here quite dynamic phenomenon. Then we can extract core surface and that would be the minimum elevation measured over time. And core surface represents the elevation or surface below which elevation never decreased. So in these cross sections, it is this red volume, and this is the volumes of the sand and the topography that was there all the time that didn't move over that study period. So again, you can see that, the, uh, that we have the Then outer envelope is the opposite. It's, it is the maximum elevation measured for each grid cell. And it is the elevation above which elevation never increased. So the core surface and outer envelope surface essentially define a dynamic layer within which the evolution of the topography happens. And here is uh, the mathematical expression of the core and of the envelope. So here is a small animation that shows how the topography during the individual years evolves within this dynamic layer. So again, the red is core, that's the minimum elevation, that's the part that has never moved, and the green is the envelope and the actual terrain 
over the years evolves within this dynamic layer. And when we extract shoreline from the envelope, we get the maximum extent of the shoreline over time. When we extend the shoreline from the core surface, we get the minimum. And then the shoreline for the individual years essentially evolves within this shoreline band. And as you have seen, it goes back and forth based on whether there is erosion, accretion, whether there was beach nourishment, and so on. And you can see that there is a number of homes here that are right in the shoreline band, and that's where you don't really want to be because in this area, the shoreline really is very dynamic and moves back and forth. And uh, essentially at certain time, this area was in water. Here is an exa another example of core and envelope. This is for a large dune, so the core is really big in this area and you can see in the area where the jockey's ridge was really high the dynamic layer is also very high and this represents the change over quite long time period starting in 1974 also the central area is rather stable then we can also derive temporal maps. So we, are, so we know the spatial distribution of core and envelope, and now we would like to know what was the time when the elevation was at minimum, and what was the time when the elevation was at maximum. And here we have an example of such a map. So the colors here don't mean elevation. They mean the year when the elevation was at maximum. And how does that help? We can, for example, see from this how the dune has actually moved southward. So you can see that the elevation was at maximum in this area in 1999 then the maximum was here in 2001, in 2005, and the maximum here is, was in 2008. So the maximum of the dune has really moved southwards. And then we can also use core, envelope, and the time maps to identify and map changes in buildings. So, for example, if we do a cross-section of core and outer envelope in an area that has lots of homes, based on the difference between the core and envelope, essentially based on range map, we can identify the homes that have never changed, that were there at the start of the study period, and during the years, nothing has happened to them. So this is such a home, so you can see that the core and envelope are practi practically identical. But here we have a big difference uh, between core and envelope, which indicates that the home was either built or was lost, sometimes during the uh, study period. And then how we identify whether the home was new or lost, by comparing the time, so we will use the time maps to identify whether when the maximum was. So when the maximum was uh, sooner than um, the minimum, then the home was lost. When the maximum was later than the minimum, then we have a new home. And then we can also query the entire time series and find when exactly or during the which time period was this home um, lost and or built. And the advantage of this approach is that we don't need to uh, analyze the entire raster map, entire DEM for each, um, 
for each time snapshot, but we first do summary, uh, summary of changes and then we focus only on those areas that actually had any changes. And here you can see an interesting example of a home, new home, that was built and actually even built and lost within the study period um, in the area that has absolutely no core. Another example of uh, changes in homes, and I'm showing this because this very nicely maps the rule that is implemented that when you lose your home, let's say during the hurricane, you need to rebuild it a little bit farther from the shore. So this can be very nicely identified uh, from the time series of LiDAR data using this core envelope and time of minimum, time of maximum approach. And here is a another interesting area and that's Rodanti that had uh, that had many new homes built uh, since 1997. So you can see all of these blue homes are the homes that were added, again, based on the analysis of around 13 digital elevation models in a very fast way using the core and envelope. Then there is a set of homes that were lost dur during this time period. Uh, you can see that um, the shoreline has just moved and also uh, we have mapped homes that are on higher core, uh, where the core is higher than two meters. So those are the homes that are a little bit um, safer uh, and you can see that there are very, very few of them. And even the homes that are farther from the shore are built on a very, very small, uh, small core. So this is quite a uh, risky development here in Rodanti. And then, of course, we are also inter interested in rate of elevation change to map the areas where the elevation is increasing and map the areas where the elevation is decreasing. And that can be done by applying uh, linear regression to each cell. So you are essentially running millions of linear regressions on this, uh, on this time series and computing, for example, the regression slope for each grid cell. And then the result will look like this. So for example, we can see then that on this side, the dune has been losing elevation at a pretty high rate on this side, the dune has been gaining elevation at a pretty high rate. And this is in accordance with the time, uh, time of maximum map. Uh, uh, as you can remember, that we have seen that the maximum has moved from this area south into this area. And here we have it mapped in a great spatial detail as a rate of change. And of course, we want to know whether this linear regression is actually valid, so we can compute coefficient of determination map, essentially R squared. And again, we can see that in this area, R squared is pretty high. So the elevation is actually linearly changing, linearly decreasing, linearly increase, uh, increasing. But we also have an area, this gray area, where the R square is relative is very low, and that's the transitional area, area where the change of elevation has transitioned from increasing rate to decreasing rate. Or there was no change, for example, in all of these very sta stable areas such as roads, and there was some subtle change uh, on the on the beach as well, a little bit of uh, accretion and a little bit of erosion. And we can map the entire jockeys ridge and you can see again these are the regression slopes. You can see that the highest rate of change was really on the top in the uh, location uh, where at the past was the peak 
of the jockey's reach elevation and we can also see that the highest rates of chain uh, of elevation loss are on ridges so essentially what jockey's ridge is doing it is flattening and again it is important to have also coefficient of determination that shows us the transition area where the dune transitions from elevation gain to elevation loss and there are many other parameters that you can extract by this raster-based analysis of time series of elevation data.